anyone even remotely talking about it or whatever. So like that community is actually kind of really, really big. So it's like the biggest movement right now going on. You know, I mean, I like the speed one. I like, you know, I like the fact that it's a growing scene. Um, that it's it's bringing, like you, it's, it's bringing it's bringing content to people who may have played a game and never got through the thing. There ain't no more. You know, when I was a game counselor back in the fucking early nineties, when you little prick ass kids would call me up and be like, "I'm playing Rambo," and how do you save the Asian chick? <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, wait, God, wait. "Really?" Wait, when people called those numbers, that shit worked? Those non-numbers in the manual? I was uh, one of those motherfuckers that you used to call and be like, yo, I'm playing Double Dragon Breed here, or Rosetta Stone. I can't beat this motherfucker. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, I didn't know they actually existed. That's never, fucking I nice. never knew people You know what it is? Yo, hey, James, say, like, I was wondering, how do you get to the secret world in no, Super Mario? You know what? I didn't. You know, the one rule was never give your name. Because that's what exactly yeah. would happen. Yeah, I know. I speak. I need to speak to Jimmy. Yeah. And, and, and my friend Joe, actually, who actually fucking, it was funny. Somebody I was talking to, on a sh on. A, oh, I oh I was talking to GQ actually. It's funny that uh, it just came up. I was talking to GQ on his stream, and he mentioned the movie Batteries Not Included, and my friend has the actual ships that were used in the movie, and he actually wound up. He was one of those guys that could never answer everything and he prayed for people to be like yeah jimmy it's for you i'd be like oh, what game and it'd be like you know fucking thriller safari tnc fucking safari and i'm like oh god really people actually bought this and that's what i would you would hear me pick up the phone people actually bought this game <laughs> but you know you, you would how do you get info for a game like that in that era see for me i'm just thinking dude i'll click that shit on wikipedia take like five seconds but different story they uh this is how you got that was the only way because you know the internet was still in its quote-unquote i don't want to say infancy but you know everybody was on their netscape communicator and they thought they were the shit um, yeah, it was starting to take off yeah and everybody either got stuff out of alt news groups um which was very i mean how did you get the info when you were talking to people on the phone i had to play the games i designed the games so I worked on the game. So I had oh yeah, answers. for what what you may not know, uh, James used to be part of Acclaim. Remember Acclaim? Yes. That's the company he designed for. I.e., where the Mortal Kombat comes from. Yep. Wait a minute. Huh, I'm learning a lot about you here. Oh, are you googling me now? <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna creep on you, dude. Yeah, but uh, James Fink. Oh God, right. he knows my name. Yeah. Oh shit! It's from acclaim, yeah. Yes, I actually uh, saxophone. I did actually do some articles with tips and tricks, and nah. for, for all you guys <laughs> out there, for all you guys out there that uh, yeah. that know him, Jason Wilson. On the stream right now. You know, Jason Wilson was also yeah. another guy out there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for oh, fucking longer than I thought I would be. <laughs> but I'm not going nowhere, so you can't get rid of me, man. You have to like, a giant bomb. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, for a sure. little, for a little uh, thing, one of their logos had the iguana that walk across it. That was they claim uh, studios. Yeah, that was well. That was originally iguana, who was yeah. out of uh, Texas, and then we bought them. Yeah. They actually did our only arcade game that never got released. But uh, yeah, we we just did, basically what we did is we would get a development house if we liked it, we bought it. Like Probe in in the UK, we bought Probe. Um, you had Sculptured Software, which was out of the out of Utah. Uh, can you give my Diddy Kong's fatality code for Donkey Kong Country? Uh, it's not my <laughs> game, man. Not my game. But yeah. yo, if you if you're in the main menu of Donkey Kong Country, highlight new game, type Barrel on Super Nintendo controller, fifty lives. There you go. <laughs> Like, no joke. No joke. B-A-R-R-A-L. Go ahead. 50 See, lives. They would have paid a lot for that back in, the, back in the day. You want to know something? A lot of magazines used to call me up, like, on the down low and shit. Like, yo, can you give me some codes? You know, and I'd be like, uh, no. Man, yeah. I'll give you $500. <laughs> I'd be like, no. Because you get in trouble. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're signed to a non-disclosure. You know, I mean, I could give you the regular shit. But, like, we didn't give out, like, cheat codes. The only game we did that for was the X-Men game for NES and that was because it got manufactured with a bug where you couldn't finish the game. <laughs> you 
And it was the grimiest shit ever because in order to find the code, you actually had to take the cartridge out of the NES system, which means you had to start the game over. Because the, the actual code was written on the cartridge itself. So that's pretty grimy. You know, but, uh, you know, it's, it's it, like I said, it's a matter of, uh, you know, I mean, a claim was shit, not the shit. <laughs> you know, we did a lot hey, of... Hey, man, we, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bust a move. Uh, oh, Bust a move wasn't really originally us. It was Tato. Uh, Tato was the original Bust a move. But, uh, and then I think Neo Geo took it after, and everybody spin off, did a spin off of that. But, uh... You know, I, uh, you know, it's funny because, like, a lot of the times, you know, if our games came up with bugs and shit, we would just give them the cheat code. And that usually satisfied them. Me, personally, as a as a consumer, I'd be mad. I'd be like, wait a second, I spent 50 bucks on this game, and you're telling me it's so fucked up that you got to give me a cheat code in order to finish it? Oh, shit, y'all did BMX Triple X. I had that I shit on gone, GameCube. I was gone before. I was oh, just about okay. to mention Yo, that. I had that shit on GameCube, yo. I was like, wow, <laughs> Nintendo Nintendo got the uncensored one. Everyone else's was censored. That blew my mind that, back then. That, I was like, I couldn't that, believe it. I was well, like, that, what? That, that, they got sued because of that. Nintendo yeah. sued them. So did, uh, what's his name, the bike dude? Yeah, Dave Mira, Dave, yeah. Dave Mira, yeah. Mira, he wound up suing them. Uh, Animal Crossing and put it. Eighteen in Wheeler Pro Trucker. Wow, I saw that game at CF in arcade once. Yeah. <laughs> so oh my says, god! If you if you play Animal Crossing and put in code horror, a cat appears on the screen and tells you that you're banned from ever playing the game again, and your GameCube <laughs> shuts off permanently. <laughs> yeah, oh I remember that part. That was right after I paid all my rent, so I got really pissed. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's it's like oh, Krusty's Funhouse. That game was hard. I love that. I, I, I got it. Was fucking hard. I hated it because of working oh, on shit. it. But it, I mean, it was just, it was basically stealing lemmings. But I liked the concept. Out of all the out of all the Simpson titles that I worked on, I'd say that and Bart's Nightmare were my favorite for Super Nintendo. Oh, Legends yeah, of yeah. Wrestling. That game was great. I was gone yeah, before that. Oh, really? Y'all, Van Daminator, random people with a Hulk Hogan-looking character. Mad random. You got quite the rap sheet here, man. Yeah, well, I have another rap sheet, too, but that's not as good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Did, did you ban somebody? Come on, you can tell the truth. Me, I never ban... One thing about this show, I don't ban nobody. I've never, mm. I'll never ban a member. I'm not going to ban anybody that comes to the show. I don't care if you... I mean, I've had a couple of people bands that I made mods because like getting flooded with dick pics and shit like that but you know pretty much for the most part I let everybody just rock whatever they want to say I'm not going to tell you I can't tell you you know what you say is wrong if that's what you genuinely believe I can only tell you like yo you gotta tone it down a notch you know fucking telling somebody to die and eat a dick is not going to accomplish anything in a positive way um but you know, overall, my whole thing is if you have something to say, like I said, you just come here and be like, yo, man, I want to call out this motherfucking speedrun guy because he's his ass. You know what? I would suggest that I would like try to turn the speedrun into a competition. When I was in the Nintendo World Championship, that was basically the original speedrun. You had six minutes. Oh, yeah. You had six minutes. You had to uh, first get 50 coins in, in, in Super Mario. Then you had to complete one track of Rad Racer. And then you had to basically bottom out with fucking Tetris. See, it's funny because speedrunners now would tear NWC fucking to shreds. <laughs> They'd be finishing the first goal in like 30 seconds. I don't know. Thor Ackland may not be able to play Mortal Kombat, but he brought the pain when it came. He actually won the Nintendo World Championship. Yo, was you around for Turok 2? Uh, I was in the concept stages. That's when I left. Game Please was tell fantastic. Me have... Oh, man. You... Turok 2 on 64? Yeah. Beware Oblivion is at hand. Unlock everything. Just go nuts in multiplayer. Yeah. You have an NWC cart, right, James? Uh, no. Oh, no. I actually, you know what? It's funny because I had my hands on one. At E3, I must confess, I cannot tell a lie. Um, Nintendo had it on display, and they kind of left the display open. And I was like, hmm. And then I was like, you know what? I have a bad feeling if I do this. And somebody else went and grabbed it and got caught. And I was like, woo, thank God. <laughs> but Yeah, yeah I you don't want to mess with that, man. Shigeru Miyamoto is just going to fade into the 
fade into the foreground and start beating your ass. Yes, he doesn't sir. like that stuff. Doesn't like the piracy. You know? I mean, I like, uh, uh, trust me, I mean, Bayonetta and, and DMC, they're good games. Um, you know, right now, ironically, we were talking about it yesterday on the show. I like the new Ninja Gaiden. This Ninja Gaiden Z, I actually played it <laughs> the same day I, cr I crashed the Twitch party at Comic Con. Um, it's a different concept for the game. It's more of a run around hack and slash, um, where it's not um, as it's more linear than uh, the other, the previous one where you were fucking hard as fucking trying to run around. And it just turned me off, even though the graphics look good, but. This one, this one, I think actually is going to be decent. I'm waiting for this Castlevania too. You know, that's another one I want to see. I want to see a Mega Man. You know, I want them to. St I want these game companies got to realize that they they got to hold on to what worked. You know, this is saying if it ain't broke, don't touch it. Yeah. You know, you um, you can you can some shit. you can work on the storyline. What you got somebody over there, Liga? Like, would you, you got somebody? Uh, uh, me and my co-worker are going to go get Jack in the Box right now. Oh. Chilling. All right. Ignore me. All right, I got my mic muted. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Pick me up a, yeah, pick, pick me up a Jack in the Box yeah. taco, man. There you go. Pick me up a Jack in the Box taco, man. You know what we don't have? Yeah, I got you, man. We got no, no, Two no, tacos. We don't have any one of those, those in New York no more, man. I want one of those ultimate cheeseburgers, yo. After they came out with that random commercial <laughs> with a boy band, I was like, oh, yeah. my God. Best hamburger on the planet. No way. All right, Liger, I want a number two extra mayo. I want 18 chicken nuggets, um, half of them breaded, half of them grilled. I want three Dr. Peppers, one light ice, one heavy ice. Um, I'd like two boxes of curly fries, one of them mixed. Um, I want a number four extra cheese. I want a number 72, no cheese. I want a number 89, sauce, sauce, sauce. And uh, can I get that all to go, please? <laughs> yeah, easy money. Oh yeah. <laughs> of course oh, yeah. it's to go, dude, man. We're yeah, fucking close right now. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck. You know, I forget that every time. Twenty four hour drive through though, man, we in there. there go. All we got is all <laughs> we got, got all we got out here is White Castle, man. Yeah, we got white <laughs> we don't have <laughs> we, we, got, we got no more Jacks. Jack in the box was out here originally, you know that John? Was it? Yeah, originally. Yeah, like, it was I on remember Long on Island. TV. In TV, they always show all these fucking restaurants. I'm like, not a single one of these motherfucking things are in New York City. What is this shit? Like, why are you showing That's me Sonic? You guys have pizza. all these fucking, like, pizzerias pizza. and shit. They got a Sonic on Long Island, actually. Yeah. But I'm not, it, it's got one of those stupid lines, and I'm like, nah, get the fuck. It's just a goddamn burger at the end of the day. Yeah, Sonic. So I'm trying to think all the way. Ruby Tuesdays, they just put it. They put one in Times Square. Yeah. So we have now that, that flagship store, they're calling it. Uh, I mean, and then, Lord, uh, right. Give me uh, a double bacon cheddar. Yo, ultimate cheeseburger. Yo, like four of them shits. But, uh, no, I, uh, you know, as far as the games that I've worked on in the past, I've done quite a few. You know, I mean, I, my, the list is kind of stupid. Uh, you know, I was like a Agent 69 fucking on the Haynes commercial, like... Everybody would bring their game to me like I was the final guy that like I was final boss You know if, if it got past me without crashing then I was like, okay, it's good to go But they got they, they kind of got frustrated because I would always break the games and they were like uh, Can you stop breaking it like we got to get this out like next week? And I'm like well then put the game together write the code right man what, what do you want? You know what see you know what it is You know what I miss about that age of games is like when it came out People had to learn it, and it was one and done, and there it was, and they had to recept it. They had to learn all the things in the game, and, like, you know, there was difficulty and all that shit. Now that we have patches and all that bullshit on the fly, people just throw shit out, and then, like, a lot of people just want something patched. Oh, this is broken. Oh, this is nerfed and all this. I hate that so much because that ruins, like, almost everything, like, all the time. I've told numerous developers that work on fighting games. Tell the motherfuckers to eat a dick. Don't patch the goddamn game. Leave it as is. You are the artist, you know, and, and, and like I've said before, nobody went up to Michelangelo and be like, you know, maybe you should make her eyes blue instead of green. Because <laughs> he, he would tell them, fuck you, I'm creating this. 
Yeah, because I figured, like, especially when Injustice first came out, like, Ed Boon is the nicest man on the planet for giving them all those patches. Oh my god, I've never yeah. seen anything like that. But I was like, when they came out, when Scorpion first came out, of course he's going to be fucking amazing. That's Ed Boon's favorite character. He voices the character, for God's sakes. Of course it's going to be amazing. That's his envision of what he is. Y'all just have to hold that L and adapt. But, like, people know, oh, let's nerf it. Let's do this. Oh, he's broken. Oh my god. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one ever wants to, like, adapt or anything anymore. Like, it's always like, oh, we got to nerf it to shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it kills me when I see it. I'm like, we didn't, you know, and they're like, well, but it makes the game better. It doesn't really make the game better. It just no, it makes the game easier for them. That's what it does. And then they want to complain about comeback mechanics in, in fucking Marvel 3, but yet when that game first came out, they were complaining about how much life Sentinel had. Then beat him up if he has life. Beat him up. Beat, him up. beat the character up. All right, wait, wait, wait. Fucking Sentinel. God rest his soul. I miss him. Yo, you know, I, I remember I had it on PS3, right? I was chilling, you know, and I said, oh, there's a patch. And then after that patch, Sentinel had, like, no life. I was like, oh, what happened? Yo, why? Fucking Sentinel got fucked, dude. And then it's just the fact that they listen to just people bitching on farms. For no reason. The game had only been out a week. Oh, Sentinel has too much health too much power. See... I mean, now he's the most beatable character in the game. Everybody can answer overhead him. Hulk can answer overhead him, dude. Come on. Well, see, all right. See, like Vince says in the chat, OBS Vince K, he says, I'm happy that they patch Skyrim on PS3. Well, that's that's different. You know what I'm saying? If you're patching a game so there's a fix or, or let's say something's broken or it's not playable, granted, dandy. But what if they just said, oh, well, you know, this guy's complaining that, that he can't beat dragons in Skyrim, so we're going to make the, that dragons go out their way to land first before they hit you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's it's it's terrible. Like you know shit that's like that been is the problem. terrible. That's been the problem I feel like with this whole new generation of gaming. It's like all these developers are half assing every fucking game that comes out. Because they know they like, can oh, patch it. Later, whatever. All these broken games keep coming out. I haven't had a good game that's come out day one in so long. The only game I even have right now is Battlefield Four and that's just whatever. It's just keep time going. Battlefield then if you Four look is great for explosions. Yeah, if you yeah. look at like a lot of the FPS games too, most of the time when they come out patches, no, they don't make no specific guns stronger or any of that nonsense. They're just fixing bugs and making like the net play better. They don't care about like, oh, you're getting killed by Uzi. Who gives a fuck? That's not a problem. You brought it. We're eating steak dinner. Uh, you're in seven. I wish they would stop updating Team Fortress too. Really? That game's never going to get stopped updating. Yeah. Valve is like that's the company for updating like on the fly. Like games get so many patches and fixes this here and there and added content and all this crazy shit. If you play Team Fortress 2 when it launched and then you play it now, they're two different beasts completely. Try getting an Xbox copy of TF. I had I had uh the oh, Xbox that was... on Xbox on Xbox 360. I played the shit out of that. Yeah. That was the same though as for Left 4 Dead, dude, the original. Yep. I mean, they patched and, the shit uh, out of the game. I loved it. The original Hunters did 10 claw damage each time. The shit was nuts. Yeah. And they patched the shit out of him, so he can only really do high fall damage. Yo, I got your Jack in the Box, though, by the way. We in there. <laughs> All right. We're on the way, dog. <laughs> I'm waiting. You right Where you at? <laughs> out of Long Island. I'll be waiting. Oh, you got to take on that the drive. <laughs> hey, hey, person in the Jack in the Box drive through. how do you feel about horror banning uh, Peaches and Duke? Uh huh. Yeah, let me put him on speaker. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Yeah. Ask him. Hey. hey uh, listen, would you agree to remove horror? Wait, what? Do you agree to remove horror? Remember, I told you the admin. I agree to move, remove horror. That's kind of bullshit. That's com that's complete, like utter bullshit. That he has the fucking right to ban people just because he's a little butt hurt. <laughs> yeah, just because any comment, because like, if you think of it like this way, let's say one of your friends got into an altercation, he said like something that was supposed to be like a smarmy remark, like a smart ass, smart ass remark, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't something vindicating. He got banned from it, and because you're guilty by association, now you're banned. And anyone else that, hey, why did my friend get banned? Now they're banned. Oh, look, you know, they're just banning people. If you ask questions, now they're banned. And he's like, oh, hey, let's just put a, a title on our Twitch channel, you know, Dude, asking banned why. My dog. Now we're banned. He like, banned my dog. Banned. It's crazy. Everyone is getting banned for this. Like, like OD banned. Like, I, I feel persecuted personally. Well, thank, thank you. Oh yeah. Do you think they should patch or they should have the uh, 
the rosters of fighting games balance before they release it and not patch it to hell after they release yeah, it. Yeah, they, they gotta, you know... Listen, balance it before it comes out yeah. and then don't touch it afterwards. <laughs> Fuck what entitled top players say. I mean, look, Fuck what they I say. am not a Marvel player, but I will say this, you know, I, I think Sentinel should be big, slow, and powerful. <laughs> I mean, that's the way his physics is designed. You know, um, when you design a game... You try to keep some realism as far as the physics in there still and intact. You know, like I said with Street Fighter yesterday, Zangief is supposed to be big, slow, but if he gets in, you're fucked. You know, yeah. if I hit him, it's not supposed to fucking do the same amount of damage as if I hit fucking Ken or Ryu. It should do actually less. Yeah, like that's like when Marvel 3 first came out. Fucking Sentinel had crazy amounts of life, but that man was a giant fucking hitbox. All sorts of shit will work on him that didn't work on anybody else. Yeah. Nah, I agree. You know, and it's it's funny because you know, you look at the way these guys are doing these patches, and it's like it's almost like they say, "Ah, fuck it, let's just do it." You know, it's like you know, you turn you turn the guy who theoretically is supposed to be a kick-ass fucking character in the game into an absolute scrub joke. Well, I mean, what's gonna happen with Ultimate? That's what we're gonna wait and see with this new patch. Yeah. yeah, I keep hearing, like, the fourth day players aren't happy at all. Uh, I mean, I, 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 heard, like, I, look at, like, I look at KI, though, and right now I got to say it's on an even play field. Even though fucking Glacius is kind of looking a little fucking grimy. But, uh, you know, and Sindira, Sindira, whatever her name is, is kind of grimy, too. Um, what's I still funny? feel everybody's even. When they, when they announced Sindira and they said... Well, like, we want to have her because the game didn't have a lot of females. Then why wouldn't you include all the other females in the game? There was, like, four of them back then. Why don't you put them all in first before just creating others out of the woodwork? Because the other two were fucking useless. What, There's Maya? only Orchid. That was it in the original. <laughs> Maya, Maya, That's it. Maya was pretty kick I mean, Riptor, I guess. Maya was pretty kick Maya ass. was cool. She was all right. Yeah, no, she was actually pretty OP, actually. And, like, that one. Killer Instinct, historically, doesn't even have that many characters. So it's like there's no point in leaving any of them out, to be honest. It has, like, I think at most 14 or 16 characters. D you know L what I'm saying? DLC. DLC. Yeah. DLC. Hey, future gaming, man. That is going to take over everything. But what I do like is, like I said, I do like the limited roster. Because now it gives, you, it gives you the ability to actually learn every character if you want, which will make you a better rounded player at the, in the end. When you see a roster of 36 guys, you're like, I'm going to pick four or five of them, but I'm not going to play all 36 characters. It's impossible. Well, I'm not going to say go nuts like fucking what Marvel 2 did or what like Tekken does. I'm not going to say go that crazy, but like when I had Killer Instinct on Super Nintendo, you know what I'm saying? I learned all of those people because that was, you know, that felt like a normal roster. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And then now, all of a sudden, that shit goes crazy fucking fuck this door I don't know man cause when I look back how many characters were in Bloody Roar the original I think like 8 like 12 like 8 or 12 something like that yeah that was 8 yeah. it was 8 yeah. 8 was like the standard for most games I mean I didn't fuck with the walrus motherfucker but I fucked with everybody walrus. Else. whatever the fuck he was the, not the walrus the fucking uh, the mole the blind fucker the mole that's it the walrus mole same shit. yeah fuck you yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't fuck with him, but, you know, I was lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, I still w went and I fucked with the, the mole, and I was just like, uh, no, that's kind of, why would you make a mole? He's like blind and lives in a hole. What kind of fucking skills he got? He was, he was their ninja character. Yeah. That's, that's why he was there, yeah. Uh, I'll see you in a second, Alright, man. <laughs> but, Back to the grind. <laughs> But yeah, I definitely. Uh, you working now? Uh, I'm back at work, but I'm not gonna be doing anything for a little bit. What do you do? And don't tell me to dress up like a tiger and run around. We fucking ball. have this talk like every fucking time you call oh, me. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You're the fucking whiz. You're the fucking, I'm a fucking chemist. You're the, you're, the, you're the scientist and shit. Yeah. I forgot. You got me on that too, fucking. Yeah. Boy, you when, when I was asking the questions, and he's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "What's the periodic symbol for gold?" He's like, "Hey, you." I'm like, what? <laughs> you were supposed to say AG like every other idiot. What the fuck? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's What's usually a periodic response. symbol for Google? For what? For Google? D plus. Dude, I, I sincerely hope not. 
Sincerely uh, hope not. Eight man roster is unacceptable. It's Wait, what happened? Sorry, I missed. Roster. It's 2013. Okay, but I understand a little, but it's easy to learn it when you get the people released in, in, in dribs and drabs rather than just throw out 26 guys. Because there's characters in games that just get buried, like like I said yesterday. Look at Shazam. How many people use Shazam? Three in the whole country? Maybe the, maybe the world? You know, um, characters have a tendency to get buried. How many people use, um, what's her name? Uh, uh, Harlequin. Not too many, but she is good. And fucking Killer Frost. Like, there's all sorts of characters I don't be seeing on stream ever. You know? Like, I see Superman all the damn time. Yeah. Well, Superman and Aquaman are the fucking... Superman, Aquaman, but you know what? Martian Manhunter is the new fucking guy on the block. Like, I was hyped when fucking Scorpion made it to top eight, and then for some reason everyone decided to drop him when they entered top eight. Like, he didn't exist anymore. I was like, what happened? He, don't fit he got you there, he and then all of a sudden... The he don't fit in the game, man. I'm like, fuck get that the fuck shit. out of here. You're trying to win a fucking tournament, and you're going to start fucking bitching about fucking characters at the tournament. And, that, and you're going to allow somebody to cry and make you change your decisions? And then I remember reading the chat, people were saying like, oh, they're not using Scorpion because they respect each other. I was like, fuck your respect. I'm about to go home with this nonsense money that was only going to buy me like food at McDonald's. Regardless, I don't give a damn about that. If it got me here and I'm winning, I'm not going to go out my way to crutch myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, uh, that's one it's of like, the things. It's, uh, it's like, look, if you want to go win a tournament and then afterwards drop the character, all the power to you. But at the tournament is not the time to say, you know what? I honor the other guys I play with. No, fuck you. You're not going to give me my 50 bucks back. Yeah. So I'm I remember, out. I think, let's see, I think when Henry Sen used to run tourneys at CF or whatever, they used to have it where you choose your team and you can't change, period. That's what you had the whole tournament. I like that idea. You had it from, like, the get-go when they had it in Marvel 2, and you couldn't uh, manipulate your, uh, your order. Because in Marvel 2, when you're at the select screen, if you hold assist or assist 2, you could change the order that they come out in. So no one really knows what character you're going to start in. So they would actually, Same. like, yeah. Same for 3. So they, yeah, they made it so you can't manipulate your order. Like, you can't do any of that shit. So you got to play straight. But people, people won't agree with that now these days because they're going to be like, oh, well, I need to counterpick, so... The other nah. thing that people won't agree with that used to happen back then is back then you had to put your fucking quarter up and if you didn't have money to continue in the tournament, you're out. There was no free play. We paid that money. We paid dollars. We got all that, you know, quarters and all that nonsense and then like you'd you'd like basically eliminate yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's uh, I don't know. I mean We well, can go on and on about fucking nostalgia and tournaments and how it used to be, but it ain't no more. I mean it's just not going to happen anymore. And it was two out of three the whole way until finals, where it was three out of five. Yeah. Everybody gets a voice now, and everybody gets to fucking bitch about their opinions, and the majority and the popularity always wins. I, like yeah. I said, my old school ways say one and done. Get the fuck off. Fuck your two out of three, your three out of five, your first to tens, your first to fifteens and twenties. If you have this skill, bring it one shot and you're done. Like the arcade. Put your quarter on the machine. Shut the fuck up. If you need to counter pick me, counter pick me. You know, that's what random, that's what hidden cursor was for. So you didn't know yeah. who the fuck I picked. Bird. You know, this, this, this mentality of everybody, you know, the kumbaya shit. There's no, you know, and Sanford said it. There's fucking, let's 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 have hugs in the fucking lobby of a hotel before our tournament, and fucking all get along and be happy. No, I could get along and be happy with anybody, but come tournament time, I want to fucking, I want to stab you in the neck and whoop your ass in the game. You know, <laughs> we can after the tournament's over and you know, well, the it's night's really over. Edge of competition, the whole stabbing. You know, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't gonna work. I mean, I don't think I could stab anybody. I don't have it in me. Um, but uh, you know, the point is that the competitiveness is like, and the people look at the top eight players and like, oh, well, I'm not gonna beat them. Really, you came to a tournament with that mentality? Yeah. Then you're basically making yourself lose before it even happens. Yeah, you already you already writing yourself off. You know, I mean, like I said, I would I, I personally, if I was still in that true competitive mode. Um, like I said, at NAC, I'm actually playing Street Fighter. I entered Street Fighter, KI, MK9, and Injustice. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I, I can count on my fingers how many hours I actually put into Injustice since release. 
Um, but I don't, you know, belittle the game. I mean, there's some issues, but the game still has some play value to it to me. But I'm not going there with the intent of winning because I'd be a jerk off to think that based off of the amount that I put in. You know, but if I was one of these guys that had been playing the game regularly, you know, and being a competitor, um, whether it's playing online, offline, going to events, and then you go to an event and you're like, hey, well, I'm not going to beat CD Jr. or fucking Rio or fucking Tyrant. So I'm, I don't even, I'm not really caring. Fuck that. You know, I don't care if I got to fucking make out with CD Jr. before the fucking match to fuck his mind up. But, I, <laughs> you know, but I'll, I'll do every dirty trick in my power to get into his fucking head. Yeah. You know. So you guys, so there are hug fests outside of uh, well, no, a lot of drink, drink fests. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a little more appropriate yeah. for a fighting game. We get our drink fest. Yeah, this isn't a fur con, dude, no worries. <laughs> hey, man. Hugs are fine. It's just like, I don't know. No, imagine, no, like, stop I, it. I imagine <laughs> a fighting game convention. I don't imagine, like, I right, everybody. We must make peace before before the ceremony. Like, no, I don't, fuck I don't, that nonsense. It's, We're it's not a Native different. American tribe, yo. We just go to war, yo. <laughs> That's the mindset yeah. I would be in if I were going in to play some fucking Mortal Kombat. That's how you gotta go. You know, if you're gonna be, if you're going to be a serious competitor. Now, the key to this is, I said a serious competitor, not a fucking money chaser. You know, because if you're coming here to chase money, you're in the wrong scene. You're in the worst spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, between poverty streams and all the other shit, and half the people panhandling just to get to these events, um, there really isn't much of a payout. But if you're going to these events expecting to, like, retire, woo! Yeah, I mean, you'd be lucky to walk off, especially if these guys pot split. If these guys pot split, it's like, you know, total prize money will be like 2500 split between three people. You know, and you get you come across from, say, West Coast to East Coast, you're spending 600 bucks in a flight. Yeah. You know, and so then you also got to pay for a hotel per night and all that shit and food and all the nonsense or whatever it is you want. And then it's like now you're pot splitting too? Yeah, see the pot splitting thing, I'm sorry, I'm greedy. I'm a greedy Gretchen motherfucker, man. I'd be like, I, I mean, I would use it as a mind game. Like, yeah, 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 we'll split the pot. And then when I win, I'd be like, ah, eat a dick, bitch. I was kidding. I, I'm, I'm not going to split the money with you. I'm, I'm trying to be the best, you know. And, and, and in order to be the best, I'm not sharing the wealth. You know, it's just something that I've never, I've never been able to grasp. It's like, well, wait a second. Do I want to win the most money? What it is is, there. It's like betting black and red and fucking and black and craps. I mean, a uh, roulette. You know, and putting them on both and going, all right. Well, the only thing that can come up that'll fuck me is the green. You know, you're hedging your bets and you're saying, all right, I don't want to win the jack. I don't want thirty-five to one. I'm happy with two to one. You know, so even if I come in third place, I'm still walking off with, you know. And the justification is, well, if I come in third place, I'll still make more than if I just took third place by saying I'll pot split. You know, and that's and that's the mentality that keeps people from actually being competitive. And no, I won't suck CD Junior's dick <laughs> for, for uh, streamer or whatever three five whatever. Three eight five seven zero oh, five. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's figuratively, it's not literally. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, I want to see, like, I would love to see speedrun guys come out to, like, an FGC event, you know, get a couple of guys that are local and be like, yo, we're going to set up, talk to, like, somebody like Biggie and be like, yo, we're going to have a competition for whatever, Super Mario. You know, fucking run it by times, see if you could build it up and actually get it to become an offline thing. You know, there is no offline speed run. I wouldn't mind seeing there sitting there, okay, we're going to fuck, I'll, I'll, I'll even run the goddamn thing. I'll put fucking 10 monitors or, with, with fucking whatever game that you guys want to speed run and say, all right, you know, everybody put in fucking 20 bucks, you know, winner take all. I'm going to start the clock at one, two, three, go. Whoever's finished first, you're in. You're Dude, in. if we played for money, this would be, this would be a whole different ball game. That's what I'm saying. You know, and, and, and it's like, you know, the past couple of weeks I've been talking about the My Little Pony people. I'm like, come to our events. 
we're just as nerdy as you. You know, and it's and, and it's like, but you know, too many people are focused on the growth of the FGC. We know what's best for it. No, you don't. Motherfucker, you live in a fucking cardboard box somewhere playing games for fucking nickels and dimes. You are not the expert on business or what's going to make this scene grow. What's going to make this scene grow is inclusion, not exclusion. You know, I and a perfect example. Rusty, you said you play Mortal Kombat. I do. So right there says, well, why wouldn't I want you to come to our event? Yeah, you might do that speed run thing, but then you're like, oh, fuck, you know what? They're running an MK2 or an MK3, and those are the ones that I played. I'll enter um, that, too. You wouldn't want me to come because I suck. But no, it doesn't I, matter. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah. but, but, see, but see, here's the thing. If you, that, go, if, that you is wait, if you go in here with that mentality, that's fine. Because you come and you meet people, and you hang out, and you chill out, and you bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It's not only about the games. Dude, I would play. I would play Mortal Kombat with you guys. That sounds fun. You know, and, and that's the one thing that you know I like is I want you know my quote unquote esports utopia is you know watching a event that looks like E3 but competitive. Yeah, that would be badass, man. You know? I, I, you know. That would be so cool if we could organize and make that happen as a as a whole. I mean, I was the first one out there um, telling TOs that they need to bring live entertainment. You know, um, I know uh, Alex Jabelli actually was talking about it for CEO, which I hope he does it. You did good, son. Oh, I believe I believe Jabelli would be the first one to do it. Yeah. And I hope he does, you know, because, you know, um, I know VXG had the band The Gorillas lined up, but they wound up fucking having a tour. So they canceled last minute on them. But they were talking, they were in talks with Gorillas to actually have them play at the fucking, the, the party that they have at the beach. The party at the beach, you know, people ask me, oh, well, how was it? Dude, the party at the beach had about 10,000 people there. And I'm not even exaggerating the number. You know, just imagine, you know, if you live if you live anywhere near a beach, just imagine your beach being fucking from the water all the way up to the boardwalk fucking filled with people. And wow. intense, intensive people cooking full pigs and fucking a bar every other fucking, a bar every other uh, tent was a bar. And it was just people all over the fucking place chilling out, having a good time. You gamers know? in paradise. You know, and that's exactly what it was. You know, it was like Gamers Fantasy Island. Um, but, you know, these, these events, um, need to do more to keep people wanting to come down. You know, if you're a, you know, if, if Rusty comes to 20 different events in a year and every event he goes to, he just gets his ass whooped and get, loses two when he's done. He's like, wow, I'm fucking going 0 and 2, getting knocked out of every event. And then I wind up fucking sitting around fucking with my dick in my hand for two more days. Yeah, no, I agree. That's, I mean, that's the main reason. I there's two tournaments I try to go to every year. Absolutely, CEO and SCR are my top two. Uh, I sure. try to go to SCR just generally because I'm from there originally. Yeah, and SCEO is by far the best tournament. Period. You know, uh, chocolate lucky charms. I would I would tell somebody to go to VXG for, if they were like if they were going to an event. And yes, as much as I don't get along with Alex, I will say this: I can't take away from him that he runs a great event. I would tell you if you if you had to pick one event to go to, it would be a toss up between CEO and VXG. Because I live in the U.S., I would choose VXG right off the gate. That's where I'm at. I'm like I can go somewhere where it's like when can we not go to Florida? You know what I'm saying? But something like going across water to the Caribbean or some shit like that that ain't that ain't some everyday thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess as a tourist wise, yeah, I can understand. But I've already been. Yeah, no, I'm not talking like about that. competitive wise, <laughs> like fighting game tournament wise or whatever. You know, but like if I had to choose a destination. I'd rather go to the Caribbean during Carnival than going to Florida for spring break. Carnival, sir. Carnival. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, as, as far as uh, events go, you know, those are the two events I would, I would out, the, out the gate because 
of the fact, and, and again, I'm not taking away from any other event out there, but if you're going to, if, if you're telling me to suggest to somebody an event to go to, that after those events, I would hope they would, they would go out to the other ones because of their experience, I would have to say go to those two first. Then you know, then you branch out to the to the Big E stuff because Big E runs a great event. Uh, Shin yeah. Blanca, Shin Blanca, and you know, uh, and John and Joe from ECT, um, and obviously Evo. But you know, Evo. Oh yeah, ah, Evo. Evo is a different can of worms. <laughs> Evo, it's it's just Evo, man. Once you go once, you you've hit it. Yeah. You know what it is that I can never wrap my head around? It's like if I went to Evo, I think I would have wasted my money because if I went to Evo, listen, I'm in Vegas. I'm going there for fucking Vegas. I'm not going there to chill in the room and watch like, you know, yipes and these people do whatever it is they do. You know, I'm I'm telling you, I'm in Vegas. I'm going to do stuff that happens in Vegas. Yeah. Well, That's that, like my main shit. Like, wait a minute. When we went, I'm in when Vegas? I went, when Hold I went, on. Yeah, when I went to Evo, the first thing I did is I'm like, I'm not sitting in a fucking room playing money matches fuck out of here i could do that from you know vsm when i was going to vsm i could do that i don't need to fucking sit in a room in vegas to do it um chocolate lucky charms i would say it depends on where you're coming from but uh i'd say six hundred dollars between four and six hundred dollars for the ticket um you know, comparative to evo it's about the same what would you say evo runs about what, to go to Evo? Yeah. Uh, for the whole it, it depends. Like, see, me specifically, I'd buy, you like, if you buy your shit early, you get discounts for early flights and all this nonsense. But, you know, people like to be last minute. So, like, to Evo, it'd probably be about the same, actually, to be honest. Yeah, I think if, you, if you're getting it, because people will be like, oh, well, I'm going to get my ticket this week when they have to leave on Friday and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, it'd probably be about the same. Yeah. But if you get it, like, in advance, like, way the hell in advance, like a month or two or some nonsense like that in you advance, it'll be way cheaper. Yes. Yeah, you save like crazy. And if you're military, like even more money you save on top of that. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, and as far as the guy to girl ratio, I would say four or five to one was the guy girl ratio. I didn't even have a chance to hit the French side of the island. You know, I was fucking destroyed every fucking night. Dude, I was bad. Yeah, I remember, uh, who was it? Uh,. Fuck, I'm trying to think of his name. He had uh, a video of you just in the chair. Like, yeah. your eyes glossed over looking at the floor. Yeah, it was pretty fucking Counting bad. the tiles and shit. You know, I was like, oh, man, this guy's gone. Actually, let me see something. Let me see if I have this one here still. I think I still do. Uh, my videos. Let's go to my videos. Yeah, I got my videos somewhere. For me to do this shit, you know I'm fucking destroyed. Uh, You're allowed to get more chicks on Twitch, dude. What's that? <laughs> you streamers more likely to get uh get chicks on Twitch. <laughs> Alright, let's open this up. Where is it? Let's see if We I got can... babes, baby. You, you know, that's like... the last thing horror wants you to do is to get more females on Twitch, so <laughs> <laughs> that's just not going down. We'll get we'll get all the, the female furries, yo. It'll be like a revolt. <laughs> there are no food. <laughs> female furries don't exist, it's just a myth. <laughs> Let's see if this loads. Come on, what the fuck, yo? It's like happy, yeah, happy medicine. He's the one that had the fucking video, yo. You just, you was gone, yo. He was talking, and he turned the camera. You see James like counting times and shit. One, two, <laughs> and then it goes away from you. I was like, oh shit. And then like, was it Dominion throwing up his lungs, yo? Yeah, all that of was it, my video. everything, yo. He was gone, like all, all right. his lungs, everything. Here you go. I'm gonna play this video. This is how trashed I was. All right, it's loud. I gotta fucking lower it. All right. Where are we? Let's see. Here we go. The Fucking hurts my heart, my ears, man. Wait, you show him the breakdance yeah. on? Let's go, James! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't watch it. I can't see the video at work, but I'm pretty sure I know where this is going. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. 
It needs more yeah. moments like that. You know, like at every event, we need a moment like that. Do we use it? There's some slow motion and shit. Look at this shit. Ah. <laughs> old white boy got some old moves. The only thing about the video that sucks is the plumber's crack that comes out after the windmills. And that fat belly popping out. And oh my god, look at that fucking fat. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Damn. My fat ass. At least I lost weight. This motherfucker plays video games. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You trust yo, this shit never, never gets old. Oh, this is amazing. I'll give you oh, oh. Uh, no, it wasn't Mexico, man. That was that was uh, Saint Martin. I wish I did go to Mexico. I gotta go down to, to one of the Mexican tournaments. Oh, here we go. There's a shuffle up to the floor. I can't believe I actually fucking can remember how to break dance. I didn't break dance since like I was like 18. 30 years ago was the last time I actually did. Yeah, Jago does that shit. My man left like finger cramp and like competing to yeah, do that. Yeah, fucking B boy ass Jago. Yeah, yo, yeah. he does that shit now. That should be crazy. Yo, I, I know, never dude. in my mind that shit's mind blowing. You know like, what's wow, funny? Really? You know what's funny? The style, the new style of break dancing is more of this fucking getting air. Yeah, it's actually acrobatics it's more than break dancing. Acrobatics, yeah. I mean, I mean, oh, it's, it's amazing. I'm amazed that's... by it. You know, my, you know, the only acrobat back in the day was fucking. Uh, was fucking Willis from fucking different strokes. He used to always do a backflip and shit. We were all like, ooh, man, that's, I wish I could do that. But now these motherfuckers, you know, all these movies that are coming out, yo, these motherfuckers are amazing how they can contort their fucking bodies. I, I seen a video with Jago that yo, actually yeah. made me be like, holy shit. There's I, a picture. And I, said I was gonna, the chat. and I said I was going to battle him. <laughs> Yeah, that's Jago. I was that's like, Jago no. on the the F train. My man is like turning into a pretzel, and he puts his like entire leg straight up. Why behind does he him. always send fucking links that are all fucked up? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know you. I copied nah, and pasted. It, it I respect really Jago, man. He is fine. He's doing what he does. Can't hate him. You gotta copy and paste it, and it works. What? Fucking virus. The fuck it must be from my porn. Yo, you got some Shamali on there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I don't care what he what he does with himself. I don't. I mean, <laughs> again, I really don't. You know, that's what that's what bothered me the whole time, the most, is I don't give a shit what anybody does. I mean, you could fuck a person, a girl, a chick, a goat, a dude. It ain't my fucking business. You know, it was the fact that. I know who I am and my mentality, but don't turn around and, and label me something that I'm not. And that's what really bothered me about the whole that whole situation, you know, in, in the Twitch world. It was I was getting labeled, and even people, you know, and it was like I would try to explain it, and I'd be like, you know, I wasn't saying like they tried to say like, what because you have gay friends, you think that means you you can't be homophobic. I'm like, well, technically speaking, yeah, because if I was homophobic, those gay friends of mine wouldn't be safe around me. And if I'm such a racist, then, you know, you should talk to my ex-wife because she was Latina and she might fucking feel a real mighty wrath, you know. And, <laughs> and, and I was like, you know, I, I, I hang out with kids that are black, white, green, blue, purple. I don't give a fuck. If you're cool, you're cool. You know, and they tried to ride on that, and that's where, like I said, getting back to like Rushkey and your group, you got to make sure they don't fucking label you guys like they're trying to do. Uh, hey man, we I just be immune to that kind of criticism. You know, it's just it's just social justice bullshit. Yeah, you can be immune to it all you want, man. The white knights are white knights. Yeah, exactly. And hey, 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 I, just have fun. Just at the end of the day, let, letting this shit affect you um, in a personal way, like fighting for other people who have had shit done to them, that's one thing, but letting it affect you personally, dude, just, you know, it, it, I, me, pers me, I'm looking at this situation today, and I just want to stream more, like, I just want to start doing my shit more, um, it, 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 people being assholes really, I, you know. Listen, Whatever. assholes come in every walk of life. Green, black, blue, purple, fucking straight, gay, fucking 
cross-dressing, cats. cats, fucking, <laughs> you name it. You know, but uh, it, it's, you know, an asshole comes in many shapes. That's it. You know, if you don't want to be surrounded by assholes, tell them you're an asshole. Go fuck yourself. Have a nice day. You know, and move along. But don't sit there. You know, I mean, I, I harp on it now because it resurfaced. You know, the, the same one that was an asshole to me is now being an asshole to others. And his troops are rallying around him to defend what I call the undefendable. Kind of like how with my video. People were already mad at horror. People were already really sick of his shit. And uh, this is kind of, I you know, straw, camel, back, you know. Yeah. People yeah. people are pissed now, and they will, like, I know for me, for one, just, like, I'm not going to stop being pissed about it. I know uh, Duke's not going to stop being pissed about it. I know, like, some people have put, more popular streamers have, like, put up and said, you know, we're, we're not really worried about this anymore. Um, but in reality... Like this is going, this is going to stick to the back of the website until either horror is removed or we move somewhere else. Um, so, yeah, uh, we we give a shit, even even though it doesn't really matter in, in a way. I don't know. Man. I just feel like unless the top top people actually take a stand, I don't think anything's going to change. And yeah, probably. you know what, trust in me, you're right, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, when when that video did come out, uh, like Alex and other people decided to go into pile-on mode on top of me, um, and when, you know, his tranny thing came up, yeah, I did my little fucking, my big cock dance video and all that, but that was, that was the extent of it. You know, when I told guys we're not going to spend the fucking eight-hour episode talking about him trying to fucking pick up trannies. Um, and I just said, let it rock. I don't care. You know, but it's very two-faced, the scene, when it comes to certain people where if it's the other way around, I don't expect the same courtesy that I try to afford other people. You know, I might curse somebody out, tell them they're a piece of shit. Um, but... You know, unless you unless you do something to other people, you know, my my skin is thick. There ain't not, nobody can say in this scene, you know, I've had guys tell me they fucked my ex-wife. All right, so what? what? Move along. Okay, I don't care. It's like, you know, when you were kids and, like, you would say, your mother. Oh, no, fuck you, your mother. You know, and, you would, <laughs> and, and what? I fucked your grandmother. Or I fucked your grandfather. Oh, I mean, grandmother. Uh, you know. And yeah, it, fuck it, your whole family. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. and you just kept escalating it until eventually it came to punches. You know, after you fucked all my ancestors, now we're going to fight. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's like, I don't want it to get to that, to that level. You know, if somebody has a problem with me, they know where I am. You know, I don't hide. I don't fucking, I'm not living under a rock. You know, oh, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's, it's to the point where if the people that claim they want growth for this scene, they... Don't just put money in your pocket off of the off of the backs of players. You know, actually, uh, you know, put 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 in effort. And I'm not talking about tournament organ. I'm talking about everybody, streamers, tos, you know, whoever, whoever's making. You know, money. it's funny. I remember suggesting something like that to Mad Cats a while back, and then like hey. Jab Jabelli hey. like hopped on me, like you wouldn't believe when I like ding, and that's like what started the whole thing when he said he was gonna like block everybody with OBS, you. Yeah. So what happened was originally okay in Dota, the Dota scene. What they're doing now is when they stream the event, anyone who pays to watch the event, like subscribes to it, they take a percentage of that money and throw it in the pot. You know what I'm saying? And I said, you know what? That'd be great. Why don't, like, you know, we do the same? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, Mad Cats and Mark Man, they sell sticks at every event. Spooky has people who subscribe to watch every event. You know what I'm saying? You could do the same thing, and that's the incentive. Like, they're paying for that product, and then in turn, they're putting, like, let's say 2% or something like that into the pot itself. That makes sense. Yeah. It does make sense. Because right does. now, yeah, right now, MLG is doing the same thing. All right, Valve originally during the International, which is basically like their Evo, like that's Dota's Evo. And what happens is for every one person, there was a $10 uh, 
um, a virtual ticket you brought to watch the event. For every ten dollars that someone brought, two fifty from that ten dollars went to the pot. The main pot ended up being first place. Went home with one point six million dollars. Holy <laughs> fucking shit! One point six million dollars, and then you have a team of five because it's five versus five. So one point six million split five ways. Regardless, it's still holy shit. One point six million split five ways. You know what I'm saying? That like that's a lot, and that was crowdsourced. It originally was just a hundred k. Because that's what was put Damn. up by the company. So now MLG is doing the same thing, and their pot, you know, their pots are always like, you know, 20,000 or 10,000, something like that. Their pot started at, I think it was 25,000. Now their pot is 105K right now. Because that's, they're doing the same thing where you pay to watch the stream, they're taking a percentage and throwing it in the pot. Yeah, but the thing uh, with the FGC is you can't do that for every single tournament. There's too many of them. No, just do it for majors. I'm not saying doing it for like every little thing that happens every Friday or whatever the nonsense. No, nah, no, nah, not that. But fucking <laughs> every fucking majors, fucking there's one, one every month. Like, let's say, okay, so let's say we do it for the really big events. Like, okay, let's say if Evo did it, the numbers okay. that they got for all those people that like that that nice little uh, you could say PR stunt that they pulled with Nintendo that got them more viewers than they've ever had in their lives because of Smash. Okay, imagine if all those people's money they paid to watch the stream, the percentage went into the pot. Okay. It, it didn't work like that in the first place? No, it doesn't work like that at all. Never does. That's fun. It never doesn't work like that at all. No, That's they fun. only put money off of... <laughs> they only put money off of entry, I think. Like yeah, entrance and, and uh, game fee. And, and game fee, yeah. If you have an audience for something, shouldn't you, like, as a consumer, want your money to go toward the people making what you're watching well here's the thing is that everybody says when they subscribe you're subscribing to help them get better equipment to stream with but when they are on top of the line stuff then what are you subscribing for yeah you're just subscribing to watch something pretty but other than that the players don't have really much of incentive outside of what they already have yeah it's definitely i mean there's so many there's so many people that have ideas that should be bounced off, you know. I mean, and everybody keeps asking me, like, well, why are you so, you know, I get the the, the questions on, uh, what is that, fucking... Ask.fm. Ask.fm about, like, yeah. the, whole, the whole thing of, of uh, Ski Sonic, and I say it over and over and over. Um, it was just for the simple fact that he said that the rest of the fighting games in this community should go get their own fucking event, and this is this tournament is built. This, this scene is built around Capcom, and it was that non non inclusive mentality, and that it was very condescending when you know you you have actually sat and watched or commentated other matches. You know, of other games, and you're, at the same time, you're basically telling them they should just fucking leave. You know, and that's, uh, you know, and, and that's the part of it. You know, like the Mortal Kombat community has been woven into this FGC. Why? Because it's a fucking fighting game, morons. You know, fucking Blaze Blue is a fucking fighting game. We, you know, fucking with, uh, with fucking uh, Smash is a fighting game. If I pull my sword out and you pull your sword out and we smash each other in the head with them, we're either gay or we're playing a fighting <laughs> game. <laughs> you know, and That's that kinky <laughs> stuff. You know, but <laughs> let's play let's play Super Smash dudes. But uh <laughs> you know, my point is it's like where and when do you draw the line and say, Well, what's not a fighting game? You know When you're not fighting each other exactly. and it's not a beat 'em up. Exactly. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly. Yes. If it's Skullgirls, <laughs> it's a fighting game. I mean, I'm not crazy about. It. Actually, you know what? I was playing it on Steam this week, and it, yeah, it was free. Yeah, I was, was playing free. it too. I was like, I was like, oh, I actually, I'm okay. like, I'm like, I, I, I kind of like this game. Skullgirls yeah. is cool, dude. I like that game. I, I mean, and you know what's that... funny? When that the TI was going on. It was so crazy. Cause I didn't think anyone in the FGC gave a flying fuck about Dota. It was so mind blowing seeing them all talk about it or whatever. But then it's like everybody started posting what the prize pools were. Like, oh, when are we gonna get this money and then the third? But it's like, if you guys want it, 
then just support the same exact model. It's not hard. It's already lined. It's already there. Yeah. Every, you know, fucking $10 that was spent, 250 went to your pot. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, nah, like, you know, no one, no one wants to do it. Well, I mean, like I said, you know, uh, Rusty, as far as uh, the rest of the guys in the speed run universe, you know, my opinion is, is, you know, you guys should look to grow your scene beyond just the stream. You know, it, 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 it can be competitive. It damn well can be competitive. We have, we have AGDQ and SDGDQ. Those are different things. Those are less competitive, more cooperative uh, donation drives. But I think that is the beginning of something bigger, I guess, mm -hmm. um, where more people are getting interested in the idea. And I think all that needs to happen is there needs to be a transition between uh, less of a like viewer uh, broadcaster relationship and just everybody broadcasting um, and doing their thing would be cool because I think anyone can do this. And if you have an interest in the in the in the subject, I think you can give it a shot and enjoy it. Um, I'm gonna have to. Log off, guys. It's been great talking with you. Right, yeah, sure, dude. No problem. Um, we're normal, we yeah. to, normally Tuesdays, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Right? Anytime you want to get on. Every Tuesdays. Oh, yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back. Um, thanks for talking about the uh, horror issue. That shit's important. It's and, yeah, uh, today, today was, like, really special. So it was, like, you know, so this is something that warranted to, like, be brought to people's attention. So it's, like, you know what? You know, I, it almost, you know what? I, give me a hug, guys. Just quick hug. <laughs> hug, hug. Okay. I, can't, I can't get to you between this fucking yeah. tiger, man. Don't worry, man. I'll just I'll just hug this guinea pig I got here. Don't hug him gently and don't break his wings because he's a guinea pig dragon. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll talk to you. All right, brother. Later. Yeah. So you know, it's 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 ironic that you know it's kind of cool that this happened. You know, I didn't really like I never really dealt with anybody in the speed run scene, and it's good to see that you know um, other people beyond myself actually pick up on this and I'm talking to other people in the FGC that uh, that see this and they're like you know hey fucking this is some BS um, with that said I am going to wrap this up because I am going to get an hour sleep before I go to work um, I get yeah you work in the city right yeah yeah, yeah and I got to go all the way down the freaking uh, water street uh, for oh, New York man. Plaza by the, by the ferry Oh my god! So. I'm like, well, I'm in Jackson Heights. I'm like 20 minutes from Manhattan, but shit, yo, you you out there? Yeah, I'm definitely out there. Trust me, it sucks. But and plus, I gotta go to Brooklyn first. Yeah. So I get to go piss in a cup for breakfast. Lovely. Yeah, it's always fun. <laughs> I'm not allowed to drink. If you notice, I haven't drank uh. on the stream. Yeah. I can't drink until April. Oh man! Oh, at least well, at least it's till April. That means like you know, in in July or whatever, like when uh, VXG comes around, that guava berry. And every when I go to Pax East, because I already got my tickets. Yeah. I'll be able to drink there too. So with that said, uh, Jonathan uh, Firelaga, I am gonna let you yeah. guys go. Um, I know it's all good. I need to get back to work, anyways. <laughs> I've been bullshitting the last two hours. Yeah, go make me, go make me, go make me a chemical compound well, if you look cocktail. At, if, if you look at it this way, now you can tell people, listen, you know, I made money by being on the On Blast show. Right, there you go. I'm yeah, on stream. Right, you know. Fucking, I don't know, I'm not going to say how much I make, but, you know, I'm making money. I'm getting paid. <laughs> I'm, getting paid. I'm getting paid to I'm getting fucking paid talk about by. nothing. Yeah, to talk yeah. about a gay cat that hates people. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Love my job. Yeah. Shout out to the furries, man. <laughs> nah, we can get more into that later. Yeah, I'll be, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm down. I'm down with the white and brown. The fucking guinea pig revolution is here upon us. Yeah, yo, Oni, yeah. Oni's not in the chat anymore. But yo, that guy, I don't know how he's finding the Dude, images, man. That was some shit. Like. That was some some Sherlock Holmes stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. So send me send me whatever hell picture you're talking about, cause I can get to see it. Oh, that shit's way up like somewhere in the fucking chat. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, but it's, no, it's in I your history, fool. Yeah, I can. Do I still have the window open? I believe so. Yeah, I do. All right, let me save the fucking dragon one. It's actually pretty <laughs> fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. Uh, send it to me on Twitter or something. Well, no, I can send it right through this. Ah. Uh, I got it. It's, it's small as fuck, too. All right. Okay. All right, let's go.
go. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And let me shrink all this down. Where's my little picture? Uh, I guess we'll wrap it up. I guess we'll just wait and see what happens with the horror situation. My guess is nothing. You know what? I think I what's going to happen tomorrow, Twitch is going to be like business as usual. And like they're going to continue to try and snuff out anything that's remotely going from this. I think they're just gonna ignore it, honestly. Because if if the other if the streamers like you know like the sh like anything anybody that's affected by it if they want to look at it like okay you want vindication you want your channel back but do you really want to go back to being at Twitch's mercy? Exactly. You know, do you really want to go back there? That's like let's say you get fired unjustly. Oh, I want my job back or whatever. But you still working for the same motherfucker that fired you? And on you know what I'm saying? It, that dude that you're working for. That dude that you're working for now is gonna look for every fucking dot on the fucking eye and cross T's. Yeah, you're gonna be like ostracized, like like remote, actually, like constantly. I actually have a coworker that that happened to here. He got fired. Three days later, they call him back to work a different position, which is basically their bitch yeah. as a courier to drive from Houston to Dallas every day. Fuck. To fucking pick up some samples, and they fucking cut his they cut his wages. Well, yeah, of course, because they fired him. So when they rehire, it's considered like he left the company, so they could rehire at a different price. Yeah, so he got he got fucked, but he works yeah. as a company. But but I mean, what are you what are you gonna do? You gotta work. You need work. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably how Twitch is gonna play this exactly like that. They some of these people need this for a job. I saw in one of the posts, you know, one of the streamers works off of his uh, subscriber money. Yep. You know so, what? I look at it this way. You know, it's not my fault that you don't plan your future. So don't yeah, blame it's... me. Don't blame me. I don't want to hear no motherfucker go, man, James, you show me in the horror. Oh, you know something? That's uh, this. This actually brings up something James said in the past. Actually, remember you had told us that you had a conversation with Justin Wong, and you asked him, "Well, what are you gonna do?" when you no longer are able to like you know play video games where you're not going to be pressing buttons anymore you're not going to be doing that and i think i remember he's told you that he wanted it oh he's going to become community manager for for fucking capcom but no they chose combo fee they're not going to fire you know what him i'm saying yeah they're not going to fire him they chose combo fee they didn't choose you you know what i'm saying no matter how you know much you got parried back in 04 it doesn't matter like they didn't choose you <laughs> yeah. they didn't choose you yeah back before evo was called evo man none of that happened like i mean that's the funny thing a lot of these top top players don't have jobs no. yeah like and then like what was it he became community manager for nexon for uh, dungeon fighter online which was like this free to play mmo and that game got shut down now it doesn't exist yeah you know what I'm saying? So it's like, what do you do? Like, you if you don't have any like really discernible skills between you and the next person, why are they gonna hire you? Like, what's what's your you know? I'm not gonna walk in. Yo, you see this 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 belt I won from being Mortal Kombat champion? You see this 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 trophy from Evil? That doesn't mean anything. Like, no, it doesn't yeah. mean nothing. No, it means you something. Do, just you, means... you can't do your taxes with that trophy. You know what I'm saying? Like none of that shit. Like none of that shit. Like, yeah, where's the 401k for winning yeah, Evil? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the Imagine and that's the thing, you know. I mean, when I talked about the insurance thing, I don't have the yeah. the the perfect game plan for it. But yeah. if you're going to build this into something, isn't that what you kind of want? Is like a future that if I'm not going to get paid Boku dollars, at least I know somehow somewhere along the line some money's getting put on the side for me for a future. Mm. You know, and you know this is stuff that eventually is going to come up because. Let me tell you something. In New York, you ain't having, you know, if this stuff blows up the way it does, yo, maybe the, maybe it's the Teamsters. Somebody going to go knocking on these doors and be like, yo, you can't have these players playing in here and they're not union. Yeah. You know, it's like that now with every trade out there in, in, in New York City or Vegas or L.A. You know, they're all, they're all unionized. You know, so there's nothing wrong with having a union that represents people. I just, I'm not, you know, I ain't the union rep, I'll tell you that. I ain't got time to do shit like that. But Then, it's like, the other thing to add, too, is all these winnings that everybody's getting, where's the taxes in it? Well, you know that, what I'm saying? What's that, the tax-free money that's flying everywhere? You know what I'm saying? That's another, like, a whole nother can of worms right there. Yeah, they, well, I've discussed with a couple of people. I mean, I know, I know like, from experience, I know Rio, 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 uh, yeah, had Rio had to shell out about seven thousand. Wow. 
you know, so it's like, you know, and plus people got to account this for all you young bucks out there. Um, if your parents claim you and you start bringing in X amount of money off of weddings, that hurts your parents. Because if your parents claim you, they're basically taking in money and, and for you to be bringing in money, you know, that's a negative against them. I know, I, like I said, I remember when I was a teenager, when I was 15, I had a full-time job in an arcade. I used to go to homeroom and then leave and go to work. Yeah. And my father got his fucking taxes and he almost killed me because he was knocked off about I made I made $35,000 that year. And yeah, working at a fucking arcade? What the fuck? I'm damn good at what I do. Yeah, whatever, dude. You don't get paid that much back then. Get the fuck out of here. No, it's true. Yeah. Back then, because arcades had real corporations behind them I and mean, things like yeah. that. It was different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, remember, what was it? In uh, Times Square, wasn't there that place with excess? Too much is not enough. Yeah. That big-ass space that had its own virtual reality Pac-Man and yeah. all that BS right across the street from the Disney building that used yeah. to have Playland. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those places had real big shit going on, but now it's not like that anymore. I mean, I, I came in as a manager. So I yeah. ran the store, you know, I, I ran the arcade, but I also ran like four other arcades. Um, and then when I ran the one in Jersey, I made a lot less. Yeah. Yeah, that was when I was older. Uh, oh, somebody's coughing. Yeah, that's my daughter. She just walked over. She's like, I gotta go to school. Why are you fucking streaming? Nah, she's, <laughs> she's like two years old. She's gonna just lie there and sit there. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm gonna let you go. Hey, Jonathan, man, great to have you on here. You know, you're yeah, yo, Tuesday. first time, first time Lumiere finally walking into the On Blast show. You're like, every time I like planned on doing it, some nonsense would happen or whatever. So, and fire if you're, uh, you know, I'm usually at work. Yeah. <laughs> fire, you're our official like furry of the show, yo. The, the official. Yeah, no, that's why. That's why I told James. <laughs> I'm your furry. Official, yo, official OBS furry, yo. You gotta. <laughs> we're gonna get. We have to get the 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 um the prodding iron, and we have to brand you on the back. It's gonna say OBS on your fucking. Ah man, I already got mad cats. <laughs> mad cats <laughs> got that. <laughs> but either way, guys, let me let you go. I'm gonna go take a nap. Um. For the 15 people left in the stream, I appreciate y'all coming down and listening to my banter. Hopefully you pull something out of this. Hopefully you guys will actually, you know, articulate yourselves in a positive way uh, to convey the message. Do I sound educated? Uh, to convey no. the positive message that you <laughs> want to convey without actually sitting there telling them, fucking, I hope you die. That shit's needless to do. And it doesn't You're help for a fact. Use it works. Yeah, that? When you do that, you turn the person... Tell him. Market. Tell him you're finna for a fag. He'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You trying to get me banned on Ustream? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I can play it, though, right? Mm. <laughs> God. Anyway, let me let you two go. Let me close this up, and let All me get right. some fucking sleep. So, I will talk to y'all Tuesday. All right, later, All right. James. All right. Peace out, man. Good night. Later. Later. And to Chocolate Lucky Charms, some, actually, you know what, I'm going to give a shout out to everybody in here. Actually, I got a lot of, of, uh, what do we got here? There we go. So we got, uh, this is cool, I can actually read down the names. We got Max is still floating around, Chocolate Lucky Charms, Fox Eye 2, He No Good, Keiju Kazi, Luminaire, Mad Fan, some random dude trusted me over in fucking England, you fucking wanker. Um, actually, I got a Ustream bot in the room. Uh-oh. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, random guests that are in here, uh, shout-outs to you guys for checking this out. Um, like I said, hopefully, guys, can uh, if you're going to fight the good fight, fight it in a positive way. Don't go bashing. And, uh, you know, keep it positive, and hopefully you guys can accomplish it. Because, like I said... You know, it, it it didn't stop with with them banning our show, and they it didn't stop with them going after uh, uh, other random streamers in the uh, the speedrun community. So it ends wherever they say it ends. So anyway, guys, peace. <laughs>